Hi and welcome. This series will be about purity, so I would like to call this uh, series Project Purity. And uh, before we start I would like to thank my friend Josh, whose uh, donations have made this series possible. So thank you Josh for your uh, respect, your support and choosing me as a tool for your mission to make this world a better place. Purity is a concept which has been used uh, within spirituality and within religions for uh, many centuries. And it is a very important concept. Many people believe it's an essential concept that without purity as a condition, certain things are not possible. And it is indeed a very uh, powerful and very necessary tool, uh, but it's also a very misunderstood concept. So let's start with that. So what is purity for actually? What does it achieve or what does it prevent? And it has a very different role if we look in a way at the masculine or the feminine. So I would say that purity in itself is a masculine invention which is necessary for the development, spiritual development of the masculine, but it has often been misapplied as being a condition for the feminine and being applied to the feminine with the exclusion of the masculine. So things got completely turned 180 degrees there. But before we get too theoretical, I want to start with a little example. Um, so for instance, let's talk about love and I'm in love with a woman. And out of this love, I'm going to pursue that woman. And what are all these factors which are yeah, going into this love if it is yeah, not a pure love? Well, of course, if this woman is considered to be attractive by uh, social standards, um, that will give me a kind of a prestige that I will have an attractive uh, partner. Uh, also, it gives me um, the perception of being a winner, of being powerful, because if she's attractive, there will be other men competing for her favors, and by her choosing me, um, that will elevate my status and will show me as a person who can win from the other competitors. And of course, if her love is very exclusive, then I'm not only one of the winners, but I'm the only winner. So then I'm not one of the best, but I'm the best. So here it grants me even more status. Then there is also the, uh, yeah, the fear, like if I love something or someone, then there is a fear of losing it. And out of the fear of losing it, usually comes a desire for control. So, because I do not want to lose the object of my love, I start trying to control uh, the environment, the society, and even her herself. So ultimately, I say, well, I don't want you talking with other men or spending time with anybody else without me. Um, and what does my love devolve into? It becomes a dictatorship where the object of my love, in a way, becomes a prize, which is jealously guarded. And often we disguise this under the name of purity, like I love her so much and I want to protect her, I want to keep her safe and effectively lock her up in an ivory tower and in a way my will, not her will, be done. So this is, you could say, a little bit of the, the, the dark side of how we apply purity. If we look at the more correct application of purity, then I would say like, gosh, I love this woman. What does that mean? What is pure love? Pure love is a desire um, to be one, to be in contact, to be in harmony, uh, to be in sync, to immerse yourself uh, in the other. So, what does that mean? She should be the, the sun of my cosmos, the light of my life, the, my guiding star. 
And what does then the purity of my love mean? Well, that I should not care what other people think about her, whether she's attractive or not, poor or rich, young or old, um, well-dressed or well-behaved or not, because ultimately love does not care about all these things. Also, love, you could say, is very much negated by fear, because fear closes off, it limits. And if I love my partner, then I would want to see and experience all aspects of her. Her lovingness, her support, but also her cruelty, her power, her fickleness. And if I say, well, I like you if you're being nice to me, but I don't love you anymore if you're behaving like that, well, then apparently I do not love her at all to begin with. Then there is no pure love. Because love is acceptance and love is not fear. Fear diminishes love because then there are aspects of her which I don't want to see, which I don't want to uh, embrace. And this lack of embracing the totality is ultimately not love. <laughs> it is some kind of a, a anger or hatred, revulsion, frustration. And that doesn't mean that if I love a person, I should allow everything. And here is the interesting concept. How do we balance the two? How do we balance this pure love, which is also a very spiritual love, the kind of love which we should feel towards both the Creator and everything which is created, and our own self? Because if I would just accept everything and everybody, what would become of me if that is not reciprocated? Would I be good at my business? Would I be good at negotiating? Would I be able to fight uh, for my rights? Would I be able to fight for my family? Would I be able to oppose anything? But here it becomes interesting. Because we need a certain passion to move us. And this is why the purity is so essential for the masculine and not the feminine. Because the masculine deals with having that laser focus. And that doesn't make it better or worse. It's like a, a 40 watt bulb and the 40 watt bulb in the masculine, it's in this torch, which can shine on and illuminate one spot very clearly, very brightly. And in the feminine, this 40 watt bulb is hanging from the ceiling, which illuminates everything more equally. In both ways, there is, of course, shadows, pieces are, which are not illuminated, but with the masculine, the shadow is much, much bigger than the light, while in the feminine there tends to be more light than darkness in their consciousness. So we have to accept in a way that because of the nature of the masculine there tends to be a focus on one thing and a lack of awareness of other things. And this very lack of awareness is the problem which purity is meant to solve. Because when I'm in love with somebody and I yearn to be with them, I am not consciously thinking about the social status or about um, how nice it would be to uh, spend time together or what great food she can make or uh, sexual gratification or other things. I'm just seeing my love. But all these other things exist. And this is the shadow which the masculine is much less aware of than the feminine. So, knowing in a way that what I'm aware of is really a very small part of the totality, and knowing that ultimately the experience and what I do and uh, is the result of the totality, so that actually my subconscious 
or unconscious acts are much, much greater than my conscious acts could ever be. I have to learn how to control these unconscious and subconscious parts of me. If I don't do that, then I can only see what I'm aware of. I will see, I love this woman, I spend so much time on her, I spend so much energy on her, I spend so much money on her. So I'm a great lover. And I don't see all the times when I ignore her or use her as a trophy or um, in other ways. And this is why purity is so important. Because unless I bring all these other subconscious parts under control, banish them, delegate them to a uh, yeah, useful or minor position, or at least keep them from interfering with my goal, then I will never succeed. It's the same way with spirituality and spiritual development. I may want to see God or um, sing with the angels or uh, become enlightened. But just like with the love with the woman, what are all these other parts of me? All these other parts which look at this as an escape or a relief maybe from earthly problems or look at it as a status symbol like gosh I am preached enlightenment in my life I'm better than all these other people um, and while all these other powers exist ultimately all my achievements will be countered or soiled by their actions so the masculine needs to purify itself before it is able to achieve anything. Now if we look at the feminine, the feminine is in a way by nature um, transformative. So it is always nurturing something or someone. The feminine cannot really uh, flourish without something to act upon. It is like a force but the force needs to be applied upon an object. And in a way, if that object would be perfect, there would be no use, or at least no positive use, in applying that force on it. So it's a little bit like trying to, uh, uh, if you're trying to heat up a meal which has already been cooked, the only thing which will happen is that it will burn. So you need to look for something which can accept the energy of the feminine. So in a way the feminine is looking for the imperfect, for the thing which can be transformed, which can be made more beautiful, more great, more perfect. So the feminine is in a way not looking for purity uh, as a condition, but rather looking for purity as a goal to achieve a perfect, perfect state. So here we have a fundamentally different role which purity plays within the feminine and within the masculine cosmos. And to understand that more deeply, I will go into that in my next videos where we will explore the concept of the masculine and the feminine and the historical development of purity.